Welcome to Heat Street Radio. Whether you're listening to us or tuning in via video on heatstreettoday.com forward slash radio, we're glad to have you. Watlow, a designer and manufacturer of complete industrial thermal systems, has recently completed its acquisition of Eurotherm, a provider of controls, systems, software, and services for industrial markets around the world. How did the acquisition happen? What future technologies can we expect? And what should heat treaters know about this change? Joining Doug Glenn, Heat Treat Today publisher and Heat Treat Radio host, is Watlow CEO Rob Gilmore to answer all your questions. More on our sponsor, Heat Treat Today eBooks, later in today's show. Let's take a listen now. Well, welcome everybody. Doug Glenn here with Heat Treat Today. Have the great privilege of talking with Rob Gilmore, CEO of Watlow. Uh, excited to talk with you, Rob. We've got we've got quite a bit to cover uh, today. So let me let me just jump in. Let me just jump in. Uh, first off, I want to talk about just to give our listeners uh, a sense of of you and your background. I was doing a little bit. I wasn't. I wasn't stalking you, but I was doing a little okay. bit of research, <laughs> and I was pretty impressed. I, I, I've got a list of titles here, of things you've okay. done at Watlow for the last thirty-five years, right? Yes. Yep. Co-op yep. student intern. That's where we started, which is crazy. And then R and D, yep. product development, manufacturing engineer, design development manager, operations product manager. Semiconductor Business Group Manager, I think, is where you That's spend a good correct. bit of time. Yeah. And then yep. uh, VP and Chief. So tell us all about your experience there at Watlow. Yeah, I've had a, a exciting journey at Watlow and was fortunate enough to get started early in my career and figure out I wanted to be in engineering. Uh, when I first started engineering, I wasn't too sure that I that was what I wanted to do. But when I got with Watlow, it it definitely validated that's what I wanted to do. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get in the R&D group and learn a lot about the thermal applications and how to apply electric heat. And it just continued to draw me to it. And uh, and after I got into developing a lot of products, I got into the manufacturing side to make sure I knew how we built those products and then really got to spend a lot of time with customers and customers' applications to provide good solutions and solid solutions to our customers. No. So, and you, you most recently, and we're going to get into a little bit of the Watlow company history here, but most recently 2021, I think became yes. CEO of, of Watlow worldwide, globally. Yes. That's correct. Uh, we were fortunate to get uh, partnered with a company called Tenecum to really kind of help us, really accelerate and advance our strategy in the business. About 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, we really knew that the thermal loop coming together was really gonna help us optimize our customers' applications around process heating and heat treat. And uh, we've seen a lot of success in that arena and we knew that we kind of wanted to invest a much more capital into the business and help our customers be successful in those applications. All right. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about Tinica minutes in a minute. Uh, but I did have, I think I heard that you at one point in time worked with or for Lindbergh. I, you know, I actually, it was early in my career right after, uh, college. Um, uh, Lindbergh was a very important customer of ours that was dealing with heat treat and furnaces. Um, and we were challenged with some key applications with them. And uh, my boss, so it's a little bit of history of how I learned a lot about heat treat, said, they've got some significant thermal challenges and I'm going to drop you off here and don't come back until you figure out how to solve those thermal <laughs> challenges. And, yeah. uh, so it was a, I've always had a passion around the heat treat and the heat treat applications because they are the most challenging and uh, uh, learned a lot about the application and how to op optimize the application. So, so and that was Lindbergh, the heat treat, commercial heat treat company. Yeah, yes. it was Lindbergh. I think it was actually their equipment manufacturing company. Okay, so and, that's what I wanted to make sure. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good because they are two different there and I wasn't sure which one you're involved yeah. with, so. And yeah, yeah, it's, uh, they definitely did a lot in the auto industry and stuff like that. And it was really some challenging applications that uh, 
Yep. Well, that's so, good. That's good. I, I mentioned that only because I think our listeners, you know, that'll resonate with them very quickly that, you know, you, you come to this interview anyhow, and I'm sure to, to Watlow in general with uh, a, a decent amount of heat treat experience. If you've been working with companies like Lindbergh, that's, that's really yeah. good. Really good. Yep. Let's, uh, let's talk about, and by the way, I just want to make one other comment. I think, I think the fact you're in a, you're in a rare class, I think with somebody who's worked with a company for 35 years. I mean, that's just really kind of unheard of. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's a it's been a great company. Uh, we've been fortunate enough that the family, uh, the fam family atmosphere and the opportunity to do a lot of different things in the organization and learn a lot in the organization made it attractive. And it's not only me, a lot of we've got a, a lot of talent in the business with years of uh, service application knowledge and, and capability. So it's just been a great experience. So let's talk Watlow for a while. I know I know a lot of people in our industry know Eurotherm, which we who we will talk about them in a moment. And a lot of people know Watlow, but it Watlow hasn't been as core, let's say, to the heat treat thermal processing market, high temperature thermal processing market as uh, Eurotherm might have been. So again, looking, I was doing a little doing a little digging uh, first off, let's just make it known. You guys are in St. Louis area, right? Which is actually where you are now. In St. Louis. That's yeah. correct. Uh, but, uh, we've quickly become a, a pretty global organization over the past yeah. five years. And, uh, that that's why we made some of the decisions we did Our, our customers are global. They're expecting to be supported globally. And, uh, yeah, right. so we're in headquarters. It's, it's, uh, but, uh, that being said, you know, I, I like to tell people it used to be 75% of our population was in the Midwest, but now it's 75% of our population is outside the U.S. Uh, if you uh -huh. look at it, just with the growth and the acquisitions that we've made in, uh, yeah. in business. And that uh, when you say population, you're talking about employees. Uh, that's correct. Of the company. Yeah. yeah. So I, I also saw that, and, and you'll have to help me here with the pronunciation of the founder's name, but I see that 1922, 1922, yeah. not 2022, was the founding. So just last year, you guys celebrated 100. That's that's correct. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's been a great journey of the company. It's a great, great rich history of solving thermal problems over the years it's it's a fun organization from that perspective what was the what how do you pronounce the founder's name deloge 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 okay uh, okay there you go i was pronouncing the s but, but that, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that sounds good yeah but it was very impressive i i mean i know now at least they're saying 14 14 at least 14 different sites around the globe manufacturing development sales service that that type of things around the globe um, uh, at least 14 different manufacturing yeah. sites and then probably additional sales offices and development offices across the globe Definitely. gotcha yeah. gotcha and watlow as a core business heaters temperature controls, temperature sensors? Is that pretty well encapsulated or how would you describe the core business of Watlow? Yeah, I would say we look at it as a, the th complete electric thermal loop. So if you look at heaters, sensors, uh, power devices, power management devices, along with temperature controls, it's the context of that thermal loop. And a lot of product introductions. I was very impressed looking down through the Watlow history on your website. The amount of uh, new products and services and acquisitions and expansions into various countries. So, bottom line is your global presence. Your global presence, and it's uh, yeah. But uh, we pride ourselves uh, of being able to solve complicated thermal problems. And you know, yeah. we're, we've got a very rich history of having solid technical and engineering talent. So. Usually, if somebody can't figure it out, they they do call us and we help them figure it out and uh, we right. work with them to do that. Right. And uh, Rob, if you don't mind, could you just hit on some of the some of the key markets? I know you're obviously you're not all all heat treat. You know, I know you're doing semiconductors. I I found it very interesting, by the way. And I was looking at your history that you started out with shoes, some sort of a shoe heater. As I've got my boot camp thing here in the background. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I think if you look at the history, I think the the founder of the business uh, recognized there was a better way to mold uh, leather 
more efficiently with electric and he created the electric heater versus steam in those applications. And that's how kind of the, the business took off. And over the years, we continue to develop new products and new solutions as uh, electric became more of an attractive solution. So we pride ourselves on bringing the th thermal uh, electric uh, solution together. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. Um, okay. So let's talk just about, again, Watlo, not Eurotherm quite yet. Any any major initiatives that you've got going on now? Let's say that you would that you're comfortable talking about. Yeah, I, I think you know the Watlow strategy again. As we've grown up as an organization, we've we were very product centric. So we either sold our components into a lot of these industries. And again, ten years ago, we decided that if we brought the thermal loop together to our customers and targeted applications that had thermal challenges in there, we could bring a better solution to their process or their equipment in those applications. And that got us started on more of a market and application focus, which started with semiconductor. And that's been the mantra as we find that this thermal is important in these different uh, applications we focus on those applications and, and provide those solutions. So, you know, uh, semiconductor uh, has definitely been an attractive, definitely when you look at refrigerated transport and you look at the some of these markets looking for a cleaner, more efficient um, in the, uh, what I would call the diesel engine market, as an example, there's op op opportunities to use the thermal system to, increase fuel efficiency or make the engine burn much cleaner. We find those that we're helping our customers solve those problems. A big initiative to move from fossil fuel uh, solutions to uh, electric uh, solutions. So you see a lot of, we see a lot of opportunities we can help customers come up with more advanced heat exchanger, heat exchanger solutions to optimize and provide a, really a, a more efficient uh, uh, thermal solution to the to those applications. So we're helping many customers solve those applications. We're in medical. We're in a lot of um, food processing, food equipment, as you might guess. Um, so, uh, but we we try to focus on those challenging applications where thermal is critical to the process or to the equipment, and help those customers optimize those solutions. Yeah, you hit on you hit on one thing I was going to ask you as well, and that was about the whole green initiative and if that's really played well for you guys. Would you say yes to that? Absolutely. So when you you think about uh, you know emissions reductions or clean energy, uh, thermal is critical in those applications, and that's driving a lot of our products and our solutions and technologies. So uh, we're helping customers solve those problems day in and day out so could you give our listeners any sense of magnitude of the size of watlow whether it be you know total number of employees uh annual sales profit margin no i'm just kidding on that last no, one. No, uh, <laughs> you, you know we have around four thousand employees plus or minus uh, and any one time uh growing fast I probably got that number wrong, but uh, that's, that's OK. Well, that's that's going. It's it kind of gives you a relative size um, of the organization. We're investing heavily uh, in a lot of the products and technologies and supporting our customers right now. Continue to try to scale the business globally. When we return, we'll hear more from Rob Gilmore on the current status of Watlow, as well as some future prospects at the company. Today's episode is brought to you by Heat Tree Today eBooks. As the weather gets chillier, the desire to hibernate with a good book in hand increases. Better yet, choose a free Heat Tree Today eBook to keep you informed. Explore Heat Tree Today's growing library of eBooks in partnership with technical experts in the industry, and stay up to date on in-depth technical content across North American Heat Treat. To access these digital resources, head to www.heattreetoday.com forward slash eBooks. These free resources are available anytime, but why wait? Access your edition at www.heatreetoday.com forward slash ebooks. 
Now back to the episode. The other thing that you have mentioned, you've mentioned it several times, so I'm going to ask you about it just because it may be a term that you're using there at Watlow that myself and some of our readers might not understand, and that is the whole concept of the electric electric thermal loop. Yeah. Yeah. Can you address and that. What do you mean by that? So, again, when you look at it from uh, uh, the customers, and the reason I use electric, uh, you know, thermal system is driven from, again, a fossil fuel solution, uh, solutions. Uh, electric's been prevailing out there for a number of years, but when we look at the electric thermal loop is it's a really it's that it's that heater engine uh it's that sensing device it's the power management system and it's the control system and that's what i call that loop and really the industry has looked at that as you know whether it's the oem or the end user they solve those problems from the component mindset somebody's providing the electric heater somebody's providing the control system somebody's providing the sensor but we really find where we specialize is how do we optimize that for the customer's process or for the equipment to be optimized and that's what we focus on that's why i call it the thermal loop is how do i optimize process performance or application performance by focusing on that am i getting a real sense of managing process temperature or you know safety limits that we have to control because you know we got a volatile gas or that that nature so we try to optimize that thermal loop uh and that, that's the job that we do so and, it, and i yeah that makes sense and it, it also i can see how there would be value there to your your clients engineer-based clients in that they can come to one place and that's, you can say, okay, great. listen, we can we can help create the heat. We can, you know, apply the heat. We can measure it and control it. All. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, good. Well, let's jump on to then uh, Eurotherm. Obviously, yeah. acquisition of Eurotherm in 2022, which was just last year, wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Might seem like a long time ago, but it wasn't all that long ago, right? Yeah, it, 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 it's, yeah, it's it's gone by fast. So we're coming up on a, a one year anniversary. So if you can uh, yeah. take yourself back a year or maybe even two when you first started looking at that acquisition at the time, Eurotherm was part of Schneider Electric, which is a huge international conglomerate, yeah. right? Yeah. What what was appealing to you guys? Where where did you think you were going to take this thing? Yeah, so you know, Eurotherm has always been on the radar for Watlow for a number of years. They we've we valued them as a a market leader and a competitor in the marketplace, especially when it comes into the controls and the power management space. And uh, we always viewed them as uh, being a leader from on on many fronts, from the product and technology side. Uh, as we got closer, we also acknowledged that they were in some really attractive adjacent markets that we thought we could use the complement of their technology and capability to kind of help us grow and scale uh, in the business. And then as we got a little, uh, getting to know them a little bit better, recognized that the talent and the capability that they had. So they serve, you know, Wallow serves a lot of uh, OEMs is probably majority of our business they're they're more leaning towards what we would call the end user market and they're really they're really knowledgeable around these key applications and markets about what customers are doing in those applications and we found that very attractive that we were able to uh, acquire them and get uh, a wealth of talent and knowledge around markets and applications as well as the products what we were attracted uh, to as well and also it increases our presence into Europe uh, and Asia that way. It's, it's a good complement from that perspective. So we're pretty excited about having them on board. And I mean, we're, we're finding opportunities all the time to help our customers solve these applications. And now that, that those team members have access to our heating and sensing technology, that really gives them the full thermal loop to help support their customers. So it's a great complement to the business. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. So they, Watlow, before the acquisition of Eurotherm, was 
were you guys doing you were doing controls i think some thermal That's controls right. of some sort correct right. yeah yeah we we we've been doing we've been in the controls business and power business for quite some time um but when you look at the when you look at the thermal loop if a, the way i kind of phrase it is the brains of the thermal loop is in the control and power management side of the business and like to say that's the tip of the spear of what we're doing for our customers and our strategy is to bring that together. Yeah. I know the Eurotherm, uh, and I'm wondering if this is another one of the reasons why perhaps you found them attractive. I know they've got, you know, system-wide, company-wide type controls and data acquisition, data management, yep. that type of thing. Did that, did that capability play into the decision? Absolutely. That's probably a, a, a really solid strength that they have around the data man, management acquisition side of their business. And as we continue to make this thermal loop much more intelligent, access to data, and as we in there, uh, implement these smart thermal systems, data, data management, data processing really becomes a really key value driver for us in the business. So it's really very complimentary of what we would say is on our roadmap is helping people implement industry 4.0 and uh, having that thermal loop intelligence in the system is really critical for where we're going and how we're helping our customers. Yeah, that, that I was going to ask you about that a bit as far as 4.0. Can you speak to 4.0 either from the Watlow side or from the or in combination with Eurotherm and things that might be coming up? Yeah, when you when you look at as we continue to advance, uh, bring more advanced thermal loop thermal processes uh, together, data data management, real time data acquisition and really allowing that thermal loop to be more intelligent, real time, feed the process, uh, it really becomes critical. And there's many elements of what we, we actually have a portfolio of what we would call I-40 technologies that are helping our customers manage their systems and processes much more effectively. We're in a lot of alpha and beta testing right now with several of our customers to help them advance uh, their systems and solutions as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, I assume the acquisition integration of Eurotherm has gone relatively smoothly. It's gone perfectly. Uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> never a misstep. I know. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's been a, it's been a great learning experience uh, with the team. You know, we're, we're coming together, figuring out how to work together, you know, try to get, uh, focus on our customers and our opportunities, and then people find it easier to work together. But I'm actually uh, very happy with how things are going and uh, how the teams are working and uh, uh, really seizing the opportunity. So Rob, speak to us a little bit, just in a very general sense. And again, this doesn't have to be Eurotherm specific, but if you, if you know something specifically related to Eurotherm, that's good. How about market obstacles at this point? I mean, what are the what are the things keeping you up at night, if I can say it that way? You know, I think there's always going to be some of these challenges that are in front of us with uh, a business that's growing like ours is just to continue to make sure that we're developing and, and, and bringing on new talent and developing them to support the business and our customers. I think that's always going to be a challenge. Uh, these, uh, if you want to call it these initiatives and where those opportunities and which ones to focus on, uh, it's going to be, you know, different parts of the world are regulating differently, uh, which making us support those faster, uh, you know, and, uh, so predicting how those outcomes are going to happen and saying what we should focus on first is always, always a challenge. I we do not lack opportunity for our business and growth opportunities. Uh, it's, uh, so I, I, but you know, I, as much as those are obstacles, I look at those as great opportunities that are in front of us as well. So any specific initiatives with Eurotherm into either the heat treat market specifically or Eurotherm generally that our listeners would might, might want to know about? Yeah, I think uh, we're continuing to advance the strategies in these different markets, definitely 
in the heat treat market, we are coming together and really having specific strategies around that and how we can optimize, you know, the thermal loop and those those applications. But really what I'm probably most excited about is the continued investment we have in technologies and, and, and products. So we see a next generation of control and power management devices, as along with data acquisitions that, you know, you will start to see come out in 24 and 25. We continue to invest in technology platforms, what we would call the I4O technologies uh, platforms. We also have some, what I would call advanced um, and adaptive thermal systems that really allow the thermal loop to be intelligent. Uh, we've been uh, launching different products over the last probably five years and more to come from that perspective. And I'm pretty excited about some of the heater and sensing technologies that we're developing, higher temp capabilities that we are uh, developing. So, you know, uh, you know, the temperatures are going to continue to increase and some of these applications have become more demanding. And we've got some uh, interesting technologies that we will be advancing there. And I think one of the a big thing that we're also launching and actually in a lot of alpha and beta applications right now, as you continue to see this movement from fossil fuels to electric, uh, the low voltage solutions don't generate enough power. And we are introducing a, what we would call a medium uh, voltage technology and heater technology. So the ability to move from 480 to 600 volts to, you know, 4,200 or 7,200 volts is really going to give our customers the capability to ha handle going uh, to those megawatt solutions that I, uh, we can help them do. So it's, uh, I'm pretty excited about those technologies. We've been introducing some of those and uh, really some neat uh, technologies are going to help our customers be successful in, in many of these applications. So pretty exciting stuff, at least for, uh, lonely old engineer like myself it's, it's neat to get <laughs> yeah for stuff. for for thermal for thermal electric thermal loop geeks this is great stuff <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. oh that's good well there i will tell you there's a lot there there are a lot of them out there i mean there's and and the whole green initiative that just seems to be global now i mean we were at therm process i don't know if you guys made it over to therm process or not there in gifa in uh, Dusseldorf, but yeah, you know, it was all about green. So these yeah. are interesting times. These are interesting times. And I think you guys, you know, you're with your business uh, strategy seem to be very, very well positioned to, to reap the benefits. There's a lot of talk about, and you're talking about kind of closed loop control systems and, you know, instantaneous feedback and all that stuff. You guys doing anything with AI? We're in the throes of really the ability to leverage the wealth of knowledge that we have and be able to get that through our business and our team members. Uh, again, I, I can't even imagine the number of years of uh, talent and technology and uh, industry leaders in our, in our business. And I wanna make sure that knowledge gets transferred on to the next generation. And I think we are looking at AI in many ways to how to, how to accelerate that, that, that ability. If people wanna keep up with you guys, what's going on, what are the latest releases and thing, or what's the latest you know news out of you guys? Is there any any direction you wanna steer? That might be a good question for Bob, but is there any any anything you would recommend the customers or prospects do? You, you, know, uh, you know, we're continuing to advance and develop our website and that's a good place to start if you, if you wanna reach yeah. out, uh, you know, Bob or, you know, I even even myself sometimes I I'm always interested in what customers are thinking about or what help yeah. they need as well. So we hope you enjoyed listening to today's episode with Rob Gilmore. Follow and like the Heat Treat Radio video podcast so you don't miss alerts when the next episode drops. If you'd like to learn more, head over to www.watlow.com or reach out to Bob Moore for product questions or Peter Sherwin for Heat Treat related questions. Their emails are in the show description. Additionally, reach out to me and I can put you in touch. My email is bethany at heatreattoday.com. Do you have a new or interesting idea that you want to hear discussed on Heat Treat Radio? If so, let me know. Also, if you'd like to sponsor a future episode, let me know at bethany at heatreattoday.com. Heat Treat Radio would like to thank Heat Treat Today eBooks for sponsoring this episode. Find your next eBook at www.heatreattoday.com forward slash eBooks. 
This and every other episode of Heat Treat Radio is the sole property of Heat Treat Today and may not be reproduced in part or in whole without advanced written permission from Heat Treat Today. And I'm Bethany Leone. Thank you for listening.